So for the adult Dharma talk, I'd like to talk about um, kan, Kandeki, uh, the celebration of one's 60th birthday. Um, and it's really reflecting upon five cycles of life and why that's a new beginning. Let's begin with the words of Shinran Shonin. Simply achieve your birth, firmly avoiding all scholarly debate. I recall hearing the late Master Honen say, Persons of the Pure Land tradition attain birth in the Pure Land by becoming their foolish selves. Moreover, I remember him smile and say, as he watched humble people of no intellectual pretensions coming to visit him. Without doubt, their birth is settled. And I heard him say, after a visit with a man, brilliant in letters and debating. I really wonder about his birth. To this day, these things come to mind. The words of Shinran Shonin, found in the Lamp for the Latter Ages, Letter 6. Namo Amidavats, Namo Amidavats, Namo Amidavats, Namo Amidavats, Namo Amidavats. So, what is Kandeki? Uh, Kandeki comes from two kanji characters, Kan and Neki. And Kan means return and neki means calendar. So, put together, it means return calendar, which is a little bit mysterious. But it comes from com the idea of completing the five zodiac cycles. So, many of you probably know the, um, the, the animal that your birth year is associated with. In my case, it's the year of the rat, uh, which was in 1960. And this repeats every 12 years. So, there's 12 animals uh, in the zodiac, and this originally came from China, so it's the Chinese zodiac. And so every 12 years, you complete one cycle. Uh, now, in the 8th, 8th century Japan, when, when this calendar and this tradition came from China to Japan, uh, living to age 60 was extraordinary. It'd be like living to 120, you know, in modern terms. So celebration of Kandeki, being alive at age 60, was a really, really big deal. So this red, red, red vest and, and this hat is called a chanchanko. And in Japan, uh, people traditionally dress newborn babies in red, something like this. So this is actually padded. I don't know if you could see that. Um, so to, to keep you warm. And then the hat, of course, babies, it's always a good idea to put, uh, to put a hat on to, to, to help them retain their body heat. Uh, and people traditionally dress newborn babies in red. Uh, red was traditionally believed uh, to protect against evil spirits. So babies were dressed, you know, in a red padded vest and a hat called chanchanko. So red is, is aka in Japanese. And so th some people would say that this is the origin of the expression akachan, coming from aka chanchanko. So akachan is always referred to, is used to refer to a newborn baby. And traditionally, kandeki, so achieving your fifth cycle of life, uh, becoming age 60, was when, for example, the father would hand over responsibility uh, for the family business to the eldest son. Uh, the mother would hand over the rice scooper, the shamoji, to the eldest daughter. Uh, so you are, you're passing on the responsibilities of adulthood, uh, and you are allowed to literally return to childhood uh, and do whatever you please. So this is why you, you uh, in Japan particularly, you, you always would wear this on your 60th birthday, and everyone would say, ha, you're 60, you're old. Um, or put, putting it more nicely, like in Western terms, oh, I thought you were in your 40s, you're 60. Oh my goodness. Now, return to childhood, right? That, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Um, no responsibilities, no expectations. People feed you. People wash you, and they even change your diapers. People love you unconditionally, and they watch out for you. In modern times, of course, um, 60 is the new 40. Um, so I'm still considered young, and I'm expected to keep working, to keep striving, uh, to keep achieving, uh, to keep living life to the fullest. So from a Buddhist perspective, uh, kandeki, uh, or the idea of returning to childhood, uh, is the perfect time to pause for a moment and reflect 
and remember. So from zero to 12, uh, 12 years old, my, my first cycle of life, I was a baby, I was a child, and I was a preteen. And then from 12 to 24, I attended school and university. I learned how to act as an adult. Uh, I was expected to have big dreams. I was expected to achieve the American dream of fame and fortune. Um, during this time, I did become an adult. Uh, and I experienced freedom, you know, freedom from mom and dad watching me and, and trying to protect me. I was free to do whatever I wanted to do. And that's when I found out what happens when you drink too much tequila. Uh, in my case, I ended up uh, getting kicked out of UCLA and losing my scholarship. But that is a different story for another day. Uh, at age 24, I was married. And at age 27, I was a father. So in my 30s, I was really fortunate. Uh, I, I, I had an expatriate executive position in Japan, uh, and I was working really hard to achieve success, uh, as was expected to me. Now, to deal with the stress of, of, of living in a foreign country, living in a, in a massive metropolis like Tokyo, um, I drank too much, I smoked too many cigarettes, and I did whatever I could to find refuge from the craziness of corporate life. From 36 to 48, uh, the world around me began to change rapidly. In my 40s, I was considered a success. I was in my prime earning years. And then I, I hit the wall and I burned out. I just crashed and burned. Uh, maybe the Akudoshi thing, the bad year around age 40, is real. But, you know, in, in, for whatever reasons, um, I just hit the wall and I, I completely burned out. And then from 48 to 60, right, uh, my, my, the past 12 years, is, it was a time of even greater change. Uh, in my 50s, my body started, started sending me signs, um, send, started giving me proof of the truth of, of impermanence, the truth of aging. My doctor in China told me that I was a prime candidate to die from a sudden heart attack before I hit 55. I had high cholesterol. I had high blood pressure, I was 30 pounds overweight, I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, and I was entertaining uh, clients every night. I had achieved my dream of being CEO of a company that I started, uh, a company that I created in, 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 in my image, uh, the, the company that I had always wanted to work for. But I really wasn't very happy and I was experiencing a high degree of stress. But I had come this far and there was really high expectations that I would succeed. And so I was determined to keep going. And then I experienced uh, the greatest failure of my professional career. You can ask Mimi about this time, time. I was pretty angry. But this failure brought me to Hawaii as a grandfather. And earlier this year, Mimi and I were blessed with the arrival of a second grandchild. And being grandpa, was probably the best experience of my life. So my professional failure also, you know, led me back to my Buddhist roots. So yesterday I turned 60. When I was a teenager, I never dreamed I could be so old. So now I get to wear this chan chanko and return to childhood. So from a Buddhist perspective, um, this is a very important time because it reminds me you can always start over. You can always start over. You are always starting over. Every day that you wake up not dead, you're being given a chance to start over. So given the chance to start over, what do you choose to do? So every day we're given a choice. And this is when we begin to search for the answers to existential questions. Why am I here? What is the meaning of life? When will I die? What happens after I die? What am I supposed to do with my life? After five cycles of life, you'd think I'd, I'd have an idea what, what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. From a Buddhist perspective, the purpose of being born human 
being born in a human form, is to break free of the endless cycle of births, births and deaths, to, to escape this world of delusion that we call samsara, to awaken to reality as it is, to become Buddha. So the meaning of life is to discover the path to breaking free of one's self-centered ego. When will I die? Well, no one knows that one, but you will die someday. You will die someday. What happens after I die? I will be born, I will, be, I will go to be born in the Pure Land, and I will return in oneness uh, with Amida Buddha. I will return to oneness with Amida Buddha, and I will guide others to enlightenment in this world of delusion. So it is through the infinite light uh, of the wisdom of Amida uh, that we awaken to reality as it is. And it is through the boundless compassion of Amida we realize that we are accepted just as we are. We are given the chance for realizing our Buddha nature just as we are. Illuminated by the light of wisdom and embraced by great compassion, we realize that we're really not worthy of this chance just as we are. And that's where uh, we become humble and from, from humility comes gratitude. So we're really not worthy of this great chance, of, of this great compassion, of this light of wisdom. And yet, just as we are, we are saved. So in the realization of our spiritual foolishness, our utter humanness, uh, we awaken to the absolute reality that our lives uh, have always been lived in the embrace of compassion and have always been guided by the light of wisdom. Our ego self, uh, my ego self, has often led me astray uh, in my self-centeredness, has hurt other people countless times. And yet, Amida is there, offering compassion and sharing wisdom. So the life of Nembutsu, the life of Namo Amidabutsu, is not about perfecting myself or becoming a better person or striving to achieve success. The life of Nembutsu is about accepting that I am a self-centered, spiritually, spiritually foolish person, driven by anger, greed, and deliberate ignorance of reality as it is. I'm not truly grateful for the gifts that I've been given, uh, nor for the gift of life itself. And how lamentable. And yet, my life is filled with friends and family and community. My life has come full circle. I have returned to childhood. I am free to be me. I am free to make mistakes. I am free to be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I am free to th try, to try, to think, say, and do pure and beautiful things. I am free to rejoice in the great compassion of Amida. I am free to praise the wisdom and virtues of Amida. Freedom requires taking responsibility. I alone am responsible for my actions, my words, and my thoughts. And knowing this, I choose to say Namo Amidabutsu in joy and gratitude. Knowing this, I choose to praise the virtues of Amida. And knowing this, I celebrate my 60th birthday my return to childhood. Now, where's the cake? Let's close with the words of Shinran Shonin. Simply achieve your birth, firmly avoiding all scholarly debate. I recall hearing the late Master Honen say, persons of the Pure Land tradition attain birth in the Pure Land by becoming their foolish selves. Moreover, I remember him smile and say, as he watched humble people of no intellectual pretensions coming to visit him. Without doubt, their birth is settled. And I heard him say, after a visit by a man brilliant in letters and debating, I really wonder about his birth. To this day, these things come to mind. The words of Shinran Shonin found in the Lamp for the Latter Ages, letter number six. Namo Amidabits, Namo Amidabits, Namo Amidabits. Namo.